overall, when you're running a campaign, you should not be running away from more progressive policies. Every single thing that they've done since the Waltz announcement has been literally the exact opposite of the early two key moments that they had. Every single thing, okay? It is a race to the goddamn bottom. And I told y'all that this was going to cut away at the momentum and make this a close race. I went to the DNC. I told you these guys are doing victory laps like they got 10 points on Trump in Pennsylvania or some shit. They do not. The reality is dire, okay? And for some weird, I guess, expected reason, the Democrats went back to their old ways, dude. They love, they love trying to lose, okay? Snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. Oh my Lord, dude. What a f***ing stupid ass way to campaign. I'm losing my mind. Oh, we're going to give $50,000 in tax credits to underserved communities that start a startup sick i've met so many americans that are like hell yeah that's my shit dude no i haven't okay i have not and i live in the startup capital okay this is such a stupid way to campaign hammer universal programs she is supposed to have a a care economy focused uh, uh policy measure barely talks about it doesn't talk about it at all we still don't know She's supposed to talk about paid family leave. Doesn't talk about that at all. That is actually shit that Americans would care about, okay? That is actually stuff that would help every American. What the f*** are you doing? Oh my God, who's advising her? The exact same people that were advising Biden, okay? That's the problem. Except even worse, because the Biden campaign was at least a little bit more progressive and outwardly progressive in the way that they were communicating a lot of the policy that biden wanted to implement the problem is it was biden doing it it was good message bad messenger now this is a worse message with supposedly a better messenger am i delusional or does your take seem like uh common sense i don't get why they don't do that oh my god what is this i agree she shouldn't she should talk about the policies people care about but this isn't a bad policy a bunch of people here really love this and 50k is a huge deal for several new owners here no no the fuck it's not okay we're going to give $50,000 in tax credits to like newfounded startups is such a hyper-focused, focus-tested, idiotic way to campaign, okay? I'm sorry. I love your feedback on this, I dish dirt, because, you know, I don't really get to see a lot of libbed up people over the age of 40. I don't get to directly tap into this community of voters, but I'm telling you right now, this is the classic lasering in on a small percentage of people because you don't want to make bold large radical uh, like broad sweeping legislative changes because you're terrified that they're going to pick it apart oh i hate this cancer ass startup culture oh dude we're going to be a startup nation we're going to have a startup in every corner it just sucks half of this stuff never gets implemented anyway and it doesn't even matter Overall, when you're running a campaign, you should not be running away from more progressive policies. Her domestic policy is identical to 2004 George Bush's. She has not offered anything to differentiate herself. You know what actually helps small businesses in this country? Healthcare, paid family leave. You know who actually did that and sold it as that after the fact? Tim Waltz. He literally said, hey, guess what? Big corporations sometimes have a lot more revenue so they can offer more amenities to their workers. This kind of measure in Minnesota, paid family leave, will allow small businesses that don't have those same profit margins to be able to be competitive. Childcare, things like that. That actually helps small businesses. And you know what else it helps? Every other person that doesn't have a small business. She just might be someone who isn't a bold policymaker. Why are you expecting her to be progressive? What do you want me to do? Sit here and act like this is a good idea? sit here and act like this is good policy and good politics when it's both shitty policy in general and really terrible politics in general my point is she's not even trying to lie okay she's not even trying to lie to win that's what's crazy about it what the fuck was the point of bringing on tim waltz if you're just not even going to do any of that shit they should have at least run with josh shapiro so they could have had pennsylvania in the bag dude so dumb 
Like, actually, they should have just straight up had Josh Shapiro. If they're going to run this campaign, at least Pennsylvania will be locked down. It makes no damn sense. I think the main reason they didn't pick Shapiro were controversies, not because of Tim Walz per se. I mean, for sure, you're not wrong about that. To trick progressives, bro, progressives, especially in our community, like people like ourselves, people who consider themselves to be progressive are f dialed in. That means that they're not like just simply Democratic Party riders. They want policies. We are the worst type of voter, chatter. The best type of voter is the person that doesn't even think about this shit at all. And then maybe accidentally they, they happen to hear something that's like somewhat positive and they're lifelong Democrats anyway. The best, the, the best type of voter is a Austin, Austin show. He's a vote blue no matter who kind of guy. He literally would have voted for Joe Biden. He would have voted for Joe Biden even if he was dead, okay? Like he'll, he'll chirp and he'll have opinions and whatever, but he's gonna go out and vote for the Democrats no matter what. The worst type of voter is you. You're the worst type of voter because you're like, what the f this is a democracy. I have expectations. Like if I'm going to vote for you, you have to give me something like basic amenities. You know what the f the Democratic Party despises you. They would rather have Trump Republicans who have voted MAGA every f election cycle. OK, including in the goddamn midterms. They would rather have three of those guys come and vote for the Democratic Party than 10,000 of you vote for the Democratic Party because you have expectations with your vote. OK, they want zombies okay they want zombies that's what they want they want npcs isn't it also because those people vote and young progressives don't come out and vote we're not a reliable voting block bernie couldn't get us out so why kambala okay bernie obviously failed because he never made it out of the goddamn primary young people do end up voting okay just not by super high margins unless we're talking about like 2008 barack obama let's see what the uh, under 35 age uh, voting block looked like under Obama, okay? Because even then it's probably not great. 2008, Democratic share of the presidential vote, 18 to 29, 66% voted for Barack Obama. 18 to 29 demographic. What percentage of the 18 to 29 voters actually participated? Let's see, total. Okay, 2008 is, I believe, the highest until 2020, okay? 2008 when 2020 is obviously uh, a incorrect statistic to apply because of universal ballot and mail in mail in ballots and universal registration. Having said that, however, outside of 2020, the highest total voter participation rate for 18 to 24 year olds was in 2008 at 44.3%. Uh, Beyond that, the last time it reached anywhere near 42 was 1992. But in the last three decades, the highest voter participation rate for the 18 to 24 year old demographic from like 2000 onward is 2008 from the nineties onward is still 2008. The only exception being 2020. Okay. Here, I'll show you these. Uh, I'll show you these numbers. Now in 2008, it reached its peak at 44.3%. In 2012, it went down because Obama in 2012 obviously was running a way different campaign. In 2016, it went up by a little bit, 39.4%. And in 2020, it went, it skyrocketed to 48%, reaching its peak once again. Unless you are talking about like voter participation increasing when you make voting easier, 2020 is not exactly uh, representative of anything else. Old people vote, so they get treats. We don't vote as much, so no politician is bidding for our votes. You're wrong. The reason why I'm talking about this is because Barack Obama did appeal to younger voters. And when you do actually have a more progressive campaign, you do actually turn out younger voters. That's my point. That's kind of funny because I know a ton of young people who quite literally vote just so they can post a pic of the little sticker you can get. My point is we have never really had, with the exception of 2020, we've, we've never really had like an actual overtly progressive campaign that singles out younger voters. But when you do that, you clearly demonstrably end up turning them out at higher percentages. When you actually end up turning them out in higher percentages, you win. Uh, the 2008 Barack Obama Hope and Change campaign is a pretty solid example that you don't actually lose on other demographics when you actually have a bold, progressive agenda. Okay? Do you get it? Kamala Harris, on the other hand, is currently relying on Brad Summer to carry her across the finish line. It's not going to work. This is my analysis as well, by the way, like straight up.
like fear not liberals fear not libtards you know kamala harris is still likely going to win as long as she's regularly finding leads in georgia a state with reliable polls that she doesn't even need to win i'm not going to be losing sleep over her odds anytime soon i appreciate the discourse though because i get to take shots at popularists anyways if i were a rich democratic donor and wanted to maximize kamala's chance of winning i'd pay 10 million dollars of bounty to lure ex-biden staffers away from the campaign and replace them with fresher better people give them a nice job consulting on the luxembourg parliamentary election etc yeah this is one of the very few instances where like me and nate silver uh actually align on that like kamala harris's joe biden dead ender staffers are leading her are, are leading her astray they're leading her down a unnecessarily close election there's no reason for it it's just so stupid nate also personally thinks trump is going to win because kamala seemingly has no uh no strategy for pennsylvania when the race is so goddamn close right now and donald trump does have a tendency to outperform the polls when uh joe biden's lead was great in 2020 turns out that lead was was not so great uh at the at the end result of the election and 2016 donald trump won obviously hillary clinton had a much larger lead 2020 polls were obviously not as bad as the 2016 polls however Donald Trump did actually outperform the polls in 2020 in, in, in uh, key stays as well. So that's something to, uh, that's certainly something to consider in this situation as well. It's a massive problem, especially when you are considering an election that is currently super tight. My point is it shouldn't have to be super tight. There is no reason for the polls to be tight. On the other hand, here's something very funny. One of the only things that Kamala Harris has come out with that has been broadly perceived as very popular policy. Are you ready? One of the only things that Kamala Harris has come out with that I personally liked and even hyped up was her declaration that she will go after price gougers in terms of uh, in, in the grocery stores, okay? Let's take a look, dude. Oh, that's right. Support for cracking down on price gouging. Support 82%, oppose 13%. The support number keeps going higher. Maybe if Republicans scream communism seven more times and call Tim Walz a mouse again, they can drive this number down to 79%. Except the number used to be 79%, and that's precisely what the Republicans have been doing, and it only went up. That's crazy, man. It seems so strange to me that we have deluded ourselves, and Republicans do legitimately believe this, by the way. This is not a joke. Republicans and liberals both absolutely believe in their hearts that progressive policies are scary okay they do they literally believe it it's wrong it is objectively incorrect but they actually believe it that's why so many republicans were like oh tim waltz seems like a massive l remember they kept saying that over and over again once tim waltz was announced as the vp candidate donald trump and so many other republicans fox news across the board were like tim waltz oh you just lost the race you just done lost the race, dumbass. And I told you at the time, they're coping, okay? They're wrong. Turns out, I was right and they were wrong. There are 60 days remaining on this election. The fact that you don't have actual policies as to why you should go out and even register to vote, it's so unimaginably dumb. They believe the label of progressive is scary. If you stick these morons in a room and sell them on the policy without some Fox News anchor telling them that cheap food is woke and gay, they'll probably support it. Dude, this demonstrates that even when you call it progressive and communist and Maoist and Vuvuzela, people still support it, okay? Talking about price gouging, like angling it as though you are going to tackle price gouging is the perfect way to message it to the American population too.